morning children and welcome to your online Sunday school class. In the last chapter, what you have learned is about how Israel, which was once upon a time a united kingdom, split into two halves. In today's class, we will see if the two halves were successful or did they just cease to exist. So pay close attention as we go through this chapter. Let's start today's class by discussing a very famous personality. I'm sure most of you have heard of the Dalai Lama. For those of you who haven't heard, let's watch a quick video together. It's been 60 years since the Dalai Lama last set foot in the land of his birth, Tibet. He was identified as the new Tibetan leader by a delegation of monks when he was only a child, and he was given full status as Dalai Lama at the tender age of 15, a process that was sped up as Chinese troops marched over the highlands into Tibet to take control in 1950. Chinese leader Mao Zedong offered autonomy but demanded obedience from people in the region. The Dalai Lama took part in a series of peace talks with communist officials. But then there was an unsuccessful armed uprising against the Chinese in Lhasa on March the 10th, 1959. And the same year this photo was taken, showing the Dalai Lama on his throne in Lhasa, he fled across the Himalayas into India. Since then, the Dalai Lama has lived in exile in northern India. In 1989, he won a Nobel Peace Prize for his dedication to the non-violent liberation of Tibet. In 2008, there were days of demonstrations which turned into riots in Lhasa. That led to a crackdown in which Chinese state media says 20 people were killed. Tibetan exiles say it was more like 150. Now that we know a little bit about the Dalai Lama, Let's discuss a few questions. A lot of peaceful protests were sent out in support of the Dalai Lama. If you were part of these protests, what were the different kind of slogans you would have chosen? Question number two. How do you think it feels to live away from your homeland? Imagine the Dalai Lama spent over 60 years away from his homeland and in what we call is exile. In today's class, we are going to discuss an ancient old exile experience that the Bible has to tell us. So pay close attention to the story. Now that Israel as a kingdom divided into two halves, let's see what happened. The northern half, more specifically, the city of Samaria was captured by Assyrians. All of the people were deported out of that area. But that was not for very long because the Babylonians were now rising in power while they captured not only the city of Judah, but they also defeated the Assyrians. The Israelites tried to revolt against the Babylonians. But let's watch a video to know what happened. In 586 BC, after defeating the Assyrians, a new Mesopotamian empire invades Israel. The Babylonians ransack the temple and systematically burn the sacred city. Before his eyes, the Babylonian victors slay the sons of Zedekiah, the last Davidic king, then blind him. After 400 years, Israel is wiped out. The Babylonians round up the Israelite priests, prophets, and scribes and drag them in chains to Babylon. Babylonian records confirm the presence of Israelites, including the king, in exile. Without temple, king, or land, how can the Israelites survive? Their journey begins with the ancient scrolls, 
which some scholars speculate were rescued from the flames of the destruction. Among the exiles from Jerusalem to Babylon were priests from the temple. And they seem to have brought with them their sacred documents, their sacred traditions. It is during this period, through the exile, that the exiles realized that even far away from their homeland, without a temple, without the priesthood, without kings, they're still able to worship God, be loyal to God, and to follow God's commandments. In 539 BC, the Babylonian Empire is toppled by the Persians. As written in the Bible, Yahweh orchestrates a new exodus. As you saw in the video, the Israelites lost all of their political and their religious identity post the capture by the Babylonians. They were sent into exile. They lost three most important things. Firstly, their land, the land that was promised to them through Abraham, Moses and Joshua was snatched away from them. Secondly, was their temple, where their Ark of the Covenant, their security, their belief in God rested was completely destroyed. And lastly, the king. Israel demanded for a king because they wanted a unified power. However, in the absence of a king, they lost all political identity. The video also highlights that instead of going away from God, the Israelites developed a closer bond with God. In fact, I'm going to make you hear another psalm. Let me see if you guess the psalm number. This was the psalm that the Israelites sang while they were in exile. By the rivers of Babylon, there we Most of you have guessed the psalm number and I've also heard this psalm before. For those of you who haven't, it is psalm number 137. This chapter teaches us two very important lessons. Firstly, to have a firm faith in Yahweh our God. The Israelites, even though they were in exile for a really long period of time, they did not give up their faith in God. Lesson number two, God always looks over us. Even though the Israelites had committed a few sins, had strayed away from God before, God did not give up on them. He stood by them and took care of them through the toughest situations.
Let's close our eyes. Take a comfortable posture and focus all your attention on your breathing. As you breathe in and you breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. A reading from the book of Lamentations. Remember, O Lord, what has befallen us. Behold and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to strangers, our homes to aliens. We have become orphans, fatherless. Our mothers are like widows. We must pray for the water we drink, the wood we get must be bought. With a yoke on our necks, we are hard driven. We are weary, we are given no rest. We have given the hand to Egypt and to Assyria to get bread enough. Our fathers sinned and are no more and we bear their iniquities. Slaves rule over us. There is none to deliver us from their hand. We get our bread at the peril of our lives because of the sword in the wilderness. But thou, O Lord, you reign forever. Thy throne endures to all generations. Why thou forget us forever? Why thou so long forsake us? Restore us to thyself, O Lord, that we may be restored. Renew our days as of old. Or hast thou utterly rejected us? Art thou exceedingly angry with us? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us reflect on the exile experience of the Israelites. Imagine from having free flowing springs, the Israelites had to now pay for their water. They are made to slave like donkeys and camels. They have to risk their lives just to find themselves food. They felt lost. No home, no safety. They lived in constant fear and with a sense of loss of identity. often do we put ourselves in the shoes of others, especially refugees, children and women who have lost their livelihood and have to flee for their life. The news is bombarded with recent exile experiences. Imagine how vulnerable and how helpless they may feel. You are my hiding place You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance whenever I am afraid I will trust in you I will trust in you let the weak say I am strong in the strength Dear Lord, we 
pray for the refugees all across the world. May they find the strength to overcome their plight and that the ones oppressing them may experience a change of heart. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I hope all of you have had a very prayerful experience. It is now time for me to give you an activity for the week. Imagine you were given a chance to meet the Dalai Lama. Imagine how fortunate you would be. Before you meet him, you need to make a short write-up of all the things you would like to say to the Dalai Lama to show your support towards him. You need to write this letter based on the experience of the Israelites in exile. So whatever strengths, whatever qualities of the exile experience you have learned, make sure you note it down in the letter for the Lai Lama. Make sure you also send this activity across to your teachers. And most importantly, today is the 5th of September. Make sure you wish your teachers a very happy Teacher's Day. Apart from this activity, there is a small fun word search game for you in the next slide that will appear. Make sure you pause the video and play the game. Until the next time, stay safe, stay indoors, stay happy and see you soon.